Hey, John here. To this point, I have made quite a few shadow boxes for friends. Some I have posted, others I have not. This one is not any different than any of the others, except for one thing. I'm going to use glass this time. Glass really frustrates me because I never get it right. So in this video, I am not going to attempt to cut or break the glass, but instead build the shadow box around the uncut glass pane. If there are no other changes, or the process is the same from the way I made other boxes, I won't bore you with them. So this will be a short video. So Carrie, fair winds and following seas, and I hope you enjoy your shadow box. Okay, so Carrie brought me her flag, and I was really surprised to see that it was already mounted for a shadow box, meaning that it had the uh, hard plane behind it and it was folded like it was ready to go into a shadow box so all the stars could be seen. So I quickly take a measure, compress it a little like it would be in the shadow box, and I get two inches. So that means the space inside my shadow box needs to be at a minimum of two inches. Okay, so here's the glass we're going to be working with. It's 18 by 24, so those will be the dimensions of your shadow box. So let's get started. I purchased an 8 foot long piece of oak wood and this will be enough to complete the entire box. The width is 3 inches but we all know what that means, 2 and a half. So that will give me a quarter inch for the glass and a quarter inch for the back plate. So giving myself some extra room, I cut the piece bigger than 24 inches. Here I mark out 26 and 20. I cut my marks and now I have my four sides to my box. I set my table saw to 45 degree angle and I make all my joint cuts. Cut your glass track. Starting with the top piece, slide your glass in the glass track and extend it all the way to the very end of the cut. Now go to the other side and make one mark a quarter of an inch inside the glass. Now extend your mark with a square and make ready for the table saw. Here I cut both top and bottom at the same time. I just clamp them together to make sure they remain square. Check your fit and make sure your glass does not extend beyond your end cut. Now you might have noticed the burn marks on one of the ends of my cuts. This is a sign that your wood shifted a little during your cut and was rubbing against the face of the saw blade. This must be corrected or you will not have a perfect fit at your joints. So grabbing my framing jig I will correct this error. I shave off just enough to ensure the burn marks are removed. Whatever you do to the top, repeat to the bottom piece. Before you move on, make sure your joint is square and your glass does not extend beyond your end cut. Same as the other boxes, route your face and move on. Here I added two grooves for aesthetic purposes only. I cut all four pieces, then slide the fence a bit and cut them again. Cutting all pieces at once ensures they line up all the way around the box. With a dado, I cut the back plate groove. With some scrap plexiglass, I place it in the glass track to hold the corners in place. I ensure it's square and then I cut my back plate. Same as the others, I mount my ensign bar. Cut your foam board to fit. Apply your felt. Stain and polyurethane your frame. Slide in your glass. Drop in your flag. Glue on the bottom piece and attach your back plate. Now if you need to see any of that in detail, feel free to click on any of my other shadow box videos. Along with some of the contents, I was given a book to mount in the shadow box. I'm sure there are a million ways to do this, but I decided to buy some plastic picture brackets from Michael's Arts and Crafts. Not sure what they are actually used for, but in my head I knew I could make them work in the box. So I needed to figure out the best way to mount the brackets in the box. Measuring the total width of the back plate and the foam board, I had exactly one inch to work with, so I needed to find a screw that was no larger than one inch. I chose a drill bit that would make a hole snug around the screw. With that drill bit, I placed two holes on each bracket. Take your time drilling these out. Sometimes if you go too fast, you might just crack the plastic, and you can't afford that right now. Before you attach your brackets to the display, thread your screws through first. This will actually help thread the plastic for a tight grip on the screw. Then take your brackets to the board and mount. The actual wire I use is a black garbage bag tie. The black tie is less noticeable 
but strong enough to hold the book in place and also has the strength to grip the small grooves in the bracket posts. First attach your brackets to the book with the black tie and then screw into the display board. Remember to make it snug, not tight, so you don't penetrate all the way through the back plate. The foam board will easily compress and allow your screws to extend through the back plate if you apply too much pressure. So this is probably the heaviest object I have mounted in a shadow box, but a 1946 Blue Jackets manual handed down from family members that have served before you is definitely worth displaying. And of course you know my favorite part, the presentation. Sailor to put souvenirs, a flag, medals, and other items to remind the sailor of their career and milestones.